some of you are like, yeah, that's, that was my first marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that was my second child. <laughs> that was my last job. <laughs> You know, it's amazing how uh, things in life happen. Uh, you know, I'm, we're going through the series called Power Play. We just had one message a couple weeks ago. Now we're on this message, and, and it's, it's really going from bad to worse. Um, I read a story about a couple. They were, they were in a marriage, and their marriage went from bad to worse. I mean, there's nothing that they could do or try to do or nothing that they uh, seemed to, to try to work out, worked out. So finally they said, let's just go to counseling, right? It's always counseling. Let's go to, let's go to a counselor, and then maybe they, he can tell us, you know, what the problem is. So the husband and wife shows up to this counselor, and they're sitting on opposite ends of each other. The counselor's in the middle, and man, the husband just, he's just, he's just defeated. He's just sitting there, and he's hanging his head. He doesn't know what to say. The counselor asked him questions. He wouldn't answer. And finally, he looked at the wife, and he says, what seems to be the problem? And she just starts talking and talking. And ta the longer she talks, her husband's just, like, sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into his chair. And she just keeps talking. And finally, the counselor can't take it anymore. He just stands up, walks over to the wife, makes her stand up. He gives her a big hug and a kiss. He looks at the husband and says, this is what your wife needs twice a week. The husband just looks at him and kind of a blank stare and says, I guess I can bring her back on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You <laughs> <laughs> say, so what does that have to do with our story? Nothing. That, that's how it was funny. Uh, but it's, it's funny how, like, what, what we try to do to try to fix a problem, you know, or, or, or maybe God says something to you, and maybe you're like in your room and eating Cheetos, and God begins to speak to you, and you really believe God's saying something to you. And then you go off and you set out to do what you feel like God's telling you, and all of a sudden you find adversity after adversity after adversity after adversity, and then you say, does God really speak to us? I think everybody's experienced that. Or why is it so hard when I try to live my life for the Lord and I try to do the things that He wants me to do and, I'll, and there's like roadblock after roadblock after roadblock and there's like a struggle. There's always some kind of struggle that comes along with it. You guys ever been there? I think we all have, right? There's not a person in this room that hasn't been through something like that. If you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to find Exodus chapter number 5. Genesis, Exodus, the second book of the Bible, chapter 5, very easy to find. And this is exactly what takes place. Remember, we just talked about how, how Moses had this incredible encounter on, on the mountaintop with, with the Lord, the burning bush. You know, I have all this stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to send you back to Egypt. You're going to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Right? I mean, just a big encounter. I don't, I don't think there's anybody in the Bible that I have read that had that same kind of encounter. And, and, the, and the Bible says that he was he was there, and then all of a sudden, you know, the God was standing in the basically in the midst of the tree, the burning tree. He could hear the voice of the Lord, knew his name. He said, "You're going to go." And so here it is. They're getting ready to go before Pharaoh. Chapter five, verse one says it this way: After this presentation to Israel's leader, so. First, what Moses and Aaron did is they went back to the leaders of Israel and said, this is what God has told us to do. So after this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went to spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Let my people go so that they may hold, listen, a festival in my honor in the wilderness. Is that so, retorted Pharaoh. And who is this Lord? And why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. But Aaron and Moses persisted. The Lord of the Hebrews, or the God of the Hebrews, has met with us, they declared. So let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness 
so that we can offer sacrifices to our Lord, our God. If, if we don't, he will kill us with a plague or with the sword. The way it's written in this text, he's not saying to Pharaoh, hey, if we don't do this, God's going to kill Israel. What he's saying is God has the power to send plagues or a sword to you. He, will, he, can, he has the authority and the power to kill not only us, but also you. You have to understand that statement right there is a very strong statement that they're making. They're not sitting there begging, hey, can you please let us go? They're going, if you don't say, if this doesn't happen, this is what God is going to do to you. Strong, right? And then Pharaoh, verse 4, says this, and Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their task? Get back to work. He says, look, there are many of your people in the land, and you are stopping them from their work. So here was the request. Very simple. Very simple request. Let us take a week off. That's all they asked for is a week. Let us make a three-day journey into the wilderness to the place where God told us to go. We will have a day of worship. We will sacrifice to him. We will worship him. And then three days later, we will come back. Give us a week. You've had us for generations. Give us a week. And I'm thinking, this is a bad situation. I don't think anybody can deny the fact that Moses heard from the Lord. I don't think anybody can deny the fact that, that, that Moses and God had a, had a conversation. And that Moses was then given a commission and a task to perform. But then Pharaoh says some incredible things. He goes, who is this God? Do you know what happens to you? God will say something to you. You will go and do it. You might even tell somebody. And they'll look at you and go, who's this God you're talking about? Mm -hmm. That he would tell you to do this. Who is, who, who is this Jesus that that you proclaim is, is the way, the truth. Who, who is this guy? <clears throat> who is the Lord? And then they say this, why should the work stop? Hmm. You know what the world says? You, you, you tell the world that God has something bigger for me, something better for me, and God's moving in my life, and they say to you, who is this God, and why would you stop doing what you were doing? Hmm. So let's see what happens. So that's the bad situation. Now it's getting ready to get worse. The very next verse is verse 6. says this, that same day. How many days passed? None. And that same day, that moment. In other words, how dare you come in and, 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 and approach me, Pharaoh, God, and tell me about your little God? So he says, that same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the, and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for the making of bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they're crying out. So let's let go and offer sacrifices to our, God, to our God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That'll teach them to listen to lies. The world always tells you. Listen to me, I told you, Egypt's always a picture of the world. The world will always tell you that God is a liar. Listen to me, you gotta, you gotta know this. The, the, the world will always tell our kids, God is a liar. Everything that God says is a lie. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything that God says in his, world, the, in his word, the world says, nope, let me tell you a better way. That's not what God says. That's not what God does. Because he's a liar. Verse 12 says this, So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt and searched for stubble to use for straw. Meanwhile, verse 13, the Egyptian slave drivers continue to push hard. Meet your daily quota of bricks, just as you did when we provided you with the straw. They demanded, verse 14, Then they worshipped, uh, excuse me, then they whipped the Israelite foreman that they had put in charge of the work. So the, so the guy who's in charge is the one who gets whipped. In charge of the work crews. Why haven't you met your quotas either yesterday or today, they demanded. So the Israelite foreman went to Pharaoh and pleaded with him, please don't treat your servants like this, they begged. 
We are given no straw, but the slave drivers still demand make bricks. We are being beaten, but this isn't our fault. Your own people are to blame. But Pharaoh shouted, you are lazy, lazy. That's why you're saying, let us go and offer up sacrifices to the Lord. Now get back to work. No straw will be given to you, but you still must produce full quota of bricks. And the Israelite foreman could see uh, that they were in serious trouble when they, uh, when they were told. You must not reduce the number of your bricks each day, uh, that you must make each day. Verse 20 says, as they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron. It's always, listen, this is so important. So after they leave the face of Pharaoh, basically, in the court, they go immediately to Moses and Aaron, who were waiting outside for them. The foreman said to them, listen to what he says. May the Lord judge and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh and his officials. I find that amazing. He says, you have put a sword in their hands, an excuse to kill us. Then Moses went back to the Lord and protested. This is what Moses is saying. Now, listen, you've got to understand the human emotions of all of this. Moses knows what God said. Moses did exactly so far what God has told him to do, and nothing has worked out. You have to understand this. You have to understand that sometimes in life, God will tell you to do something, and you begin to make a change, and you listen. In, in essence, here's, here's what you're doing. You're taking one king off the throne and putting another king on. Let me ask you a question. When, when, when you talk about kingdoms that are fighting in your life and in your heart, is there going to be a battle? Is there going to be bloodshed? Is there going to be war? Yeah. Every time. Every time you go to make a move and you take yourself off of the throne or you take whatever else you want off the throne and you replace it with God himself, you're always going to have confrontation. Always. Right. There's a new God in town. There's going to be this battle that goes on. But, 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 but then they're confronted, but Moses and Aaron, and they're, they're questioning what God has called them to do. Why did you send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesman, listen, you have been more, uh, he has been more brutal to your people, and you have done nothing to rescue them. And I'm working on my marriage, and I'm praying for my marriage. I'm working on my life. I'm praying for my life. I'm working on my kids. I'm praying for my kids. But God, nothing seems to be changing. Why am I doing this? Have you ever thought about this? Maybe the picture is bigger than what you can see. Do you remember when we used to watch those square TVs? Do you remember having a black and white TV? <laughs> Kids are like, I have no idea what he's saying right now. I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. Before color TVs, we used to have these things called like, you know, black and white. It was only black and white. <laughs> only. You would turn the channel, black and white. <laughs> okay, there's some gray in there. <laughs> right? So, right? I mean, crazy, right? So you remember like watching black and white and then watching color? Oh, oh my gosh, that was amazing. Then we went from that to high def. Whoa! I mean, angels were singing. I remember watching my first HD football game and going, I can see the grass in the blades. I was crying. And then someone said, you should hear it in surround sound. Oh. It's like I'm at the movie theater. This is insane. And you show our kids this stuff today, they're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. 
This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes in life, the, the, the God is making this transition. There's these changes that are happening, and then these things are like, they have to become real to you, and they have to be, it's going to take some effort to see things a little bit differently. And, and Moses couldn't step back, and he couldn't see the things in high depth. He couldn't hear the things in surround sound. He still was looking at something that was something like black and white television. All I hear is this message and what's being said. I don't know what else is going to happen, but I have to trust the Lord. But he didn't say that. He went back to God and says, God, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Well, where are you? Where are you? And all of us have said that. God, where are you? We're in the hospital. God, where are you? We lost our job. God, where are you? We're broken from relationships. God, where are you? But, you, but here's what I want you to know. It, it, when, 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 this is what's happening. When you go from bad to worse, God's calling you to obedience. Yeah. See, he, see here, here, here's what you're thinking. You're thinking, if it goes from bad to worse, it's because of me. And maybe that might have some part of it. Maybe you had a part of that whole issue. But, but can I tell you something? The goal of all of that is not to show you how bad you are. The goal of it is that God's calling you to obedience. obedience there's a little verse in Samuel that says this to obey is better than sacrifice and God says I would much rather have you obey me than you sacrifice to me or make sacrifices for me sometimes God just needs us to shut up and listen give you God's response. Verse 1 chapter 6. Here's obedience. Then the Lord told Moses now you will see what I will do. See I think the reason why God let it go from bad to worse because I think God had to show Moses exactly what, was, what he was up against. He says now you're going to see what I'm going to do. See, we, in this American Christianity, we think that, man, nothing bad can ever happen because if I become a Christian, then my life is going to be great and there's going to be rainbows and butterflies and pretty little birds that fly around and I can listen to Christian music all day and I can just live in this Christian little bubble and nobody can hurt me because I am Jesus' favorite. <laughs> We are all his favorite. But that don't mean that we're gonna do always what's right. Doesn't mean that we're gonna have we're not gonna go through adversity. And just because you go through adversity, let me just take this out. Doesn't mean that God hates you. It doesn't mean that God you're his enemy. It doesn't even mean that God's getting mad at you. When you go through adversity and trials and things that break you, it's because God loves you and God says, Let me show you what I am going to do. Because inside of every single person in here, inside of all of us, we have this thing called a heart. And in our heart, we think, it, believe it or not, you sit on the throne of your heart mostly. All of us do it. And we call it pride, and we call it ego, call it whatever you want. But all of us want to sit there because we want to control it. If I were to ask you this question, do you know God's will for your life? Most of you, I would say 85% of you would struggle with that question. Do you know God's will for your life? Man I, man, I think if I knew God's will for my life, I'd be able to figure that out. Well, Moses knew what God's will for his life, and he, he's actually walking in God's will, and look at the adversity he faces. Do you know why most Christians in America today struggle with the idea of God's will? Because they, want, they have their will, and they're saying, God, what is your will, and does your will match up to my will? That's why people can't find God's will. So when you say, what is God's will for my life? What you say is, God, my will is now gone. What is your will for me? That's why you have a hard time finding it. Because you won't let will what you have. Or they'll be getting it. That's what happens. That's why, that's why Christians struggle with that. So he says this. Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh when he feels the force of my strong hand. I'm like, yes. 
he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. He's going to get so fed up with us that he's going to march us out of here. That's great, right? He says this, verse 2, he says, and, and God said to Moses, I am Yahweh the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. I know who I am. And so will everybody else know this. But I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. And I reaffirmed my covenant with them under its terms. I promised to give them the land of Canaan where they are living as foreigners. Verse 5. And you can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel who are now slaves to the Egyptians. And I am well aware of my covenant with them. I, I know who I am. I know what I promised. I know what my word said. You don't have to question that at all. Can I tell you something, church? You don't have to question God's validity of who he is in your life. He knows exactly who he is. Amen. He knows exactly what he's going to do. And he knows exactly what he's doing. Right. Amen. Regardless of how confused you feel, he is never confused. Amen. He is never challenged and going, maybe I made a wrong mistake. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing in your life and the person that you love, and the person that you care about, and the people that you don't care about. <laughs> He's doing a mighty work in everybody's life. Right. He says this, verse 6, Therefore I will say to my people of Israel, I am the Lord, I will free you from your opposition, and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with the powerful arm and the great acts of judgment. Verse 7, I will claim you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. Verse 8, I will bring you into the land I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. At the time he is saying this, are the Egyptians still have the Israel in slavery? Yes or no? But God is saying, I will make this come to pass. In case you haven't figured it out yet, verse 9 says this. So Moses told the people... Hmm. Man, you can preach all you want, but if people don't hear it, They have become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Verse 10, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected. Here it is. My own people won't listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I'm such a clumsy speaker. Now it's me, God. I can't even get my words right. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead the people of Israel. Obedience is when you listen to God and not man. Obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, for it will be well with thee, and you shall live long on the earth. Your days will be longer because of your honoring your father and your mother. Kids, I mean, this is big. Children who rebel don't live very long. <laughs> Parents, look at your kids and say amen. <laughs> Somebody said one time, you know what grandchildren are? Grandchildren are God's blessings to people who didn't kill their kids. <laughs> <laughs> Obedience. God wants us to obey. Now let me give you just real three thoughts and we'll close. You ready? So why does God allow situations to go from bad to worse? Why does God allow things in your life, when you begin to make a move towards God, why does it seem like, man, adversity strikes you first? You ready? 
three deep thoughts from Jason Henderson. <laughs> Number one, he needs us, that's you and I, to be totally dependent upon him. The reason why he allows things to go from bad to worse in your life to show you that you are not in control. That's why it happens. It happens. Moses, I want you to go before Pharaoh. And just because you can speak or not speak, Moses, even, listen, he's not going to listen to you, but that's okay because I'm still going to work. It doesn't matter what other people say or do. I have a plan. But I can't speak. Just shut up and do what I tell you to do. <laughs> Nobody will listen to me. Trust me. They will. They will. God does this so that we can be totally dependent upon. Think about it. It's the complete. God grows us up in the Christian walk. The complete opposite of how we grow our children up. We grow our children up to become what? Independent. Why? Because we want you out of the house. <laughs> we got plans for your room. Daddy needs a man cave. With that surround sound, that high def TV, so Daddy can appreciate technology. <laughs> My daughter's not here, but we told her, we got plans for your room. You're going to college. We got we got to change some drapes. We got to paint some walls. We got plans. And she goes, how how could you? How could you? I thought you were my parents. No. We want you to go. She went to school to her government class. And told them, do you know what my parents did? <laughs> my parents actually had the nerve to tell me that when I go to college, my room is getting changed. And they're all like, no, -uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> I even think some of them even cussed. <laughs> it is public school. <laughs> you know what I said to her? Good. <laughs> Good. We grow our children up to go. Lie away, little birdie. And we change, that's why we change the locks when you leave. <laughs> we change the codes. She's like, no, we didn't. Yes, we did. We are. It's got to go. Oh, no, oh, oh. I told my kids when they were young, if you don't move out when you're 18, daddy has to go to jail. <laughs> and Judy goes, and Daddy doesn't want to go back to jail. <laughs> really? I'm like, yeah. I, my kids believed that up until they were, what, 16? <laughs> God, God grows us up, listen, the opposite way. God grows us up to become more dependent on Him. It is the complete opposite of how humans raise their children. As a matter of fact, it's the complete opposite how every other parent in the animal kingdom raise their children, right? right. Yeah. They, they get to a certain age, a certain point, even in the animal kingdom, and they go. God says, the closer you grow, you get closer to me. You, you're going to ask me for everything. He needed Moses, as 80 years old, to understand that he was still in control. Can I tell you something? Why do things in your life go from bad to worse? Because you need to understand that he's in control and not you. Why, why doesn't my doctor have all the answers? Because the doctor's not the great physician. Amen. Why can't my marriage just get fixed? Because you know what? You're not the great counselor. He's the mighty counselor. He, he grows us up to become dependent upon him. The second thing is this is, he knows, listen, our complete dependence on him develops, I hate this word, patience. Oh, there's no Jesus in that word at all. <laughs> patience. My patience is wearing thin. I heard that a lot growing up. <laughs> he knows that the more dependent upon the Lord, that's going to force you to be patient. And when you are patient, 
You understand there is a process. We're going to look into it. Moses goes back many times before Pharaoh and says the same thing. Let my people go. He says go. And then he says no. But there's a reason for it. There's a purpose behind it. And God was showing Moses as well as Pharaoh. So he, he knows that our complete dependence develops patience. So he, he grows us up to become more dependent upon him. And then our dependence develops, it develops patience in our lives. And here's the third one is this. Is that God understands, he understands that our patience, you ready for this one? Brings wisdom. Through your brokenness, listen to me. Through your pain and through your bad to worse, you get wisdom that you can't learn in school. Do you know how wise we have become in the last six months? Because we've learned that God is the one who sustains us. Amen. We've learned that God is the one who provides for us. We're, we, we, we learned that God is the one who does everything for us. Not us. It's Him. Right. So you, I can tell some of you don't believe me on this. Let me give you a Bible verse. You ready? James chapter number 1, verses 2 through 5. And what you're going to read in James is the exact same thing that God just told Moses. He says this in James, verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters. Okay. Do you know who that is? I know we live in a weird, weird world right now, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's either brothers or sisters. Either male or female. Men and women. They love the Lord. Listen right. to me. Amen. That's your Amen. brothers. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking. So he's not talking to the world. He's not talking to non-believers. He's talking to who? Believers. People who have a relationship with the Lord. So that's why he says, dear brothers and sisters. So he can't speak on behalf of the world. He speaks on behalf of whom? The Lord. Right. When troubles come your way, does he say, if troubles come your way? They might come your way. There's a possibility. They might come. No, when they come your way. You know what that means? Every believer will experience trials and tribulations, bad to worse, in, in times of our lives, whether we deserve it or not. We can be guilty or innocent. It doesn't matter. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Yes! <laughs> what? Are you out of your mind? Moses should have said, man, God, this is great. Everybody's like, like saying no to me. They're saying no to you. I'm going to step back and watch you work. This is going to be exciting. Where are you, God? He says, for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Have you ever had your faith tested? So let it grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Could be a song there. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete and he says what needing what nothing, nothing. oh I mean, what do we need in this life we're like everything god says when you allow me to work you're going to find out the end of everything all that you don't need anything that i you know why you don't need anything because he provides everything Needing nothing. Verse 5, and in your in, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. The smartest people in our world tell us that they're the smartest people in the world. They have an incredible mind. They can think in these mathematical equations. But I'm telling you right now, wisdom only comes from the Lord. We don't 
don't want our kids to be smart. We want our children to be wise. Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. Listen, and he will not, he will not rebuke you for asking. Why do things go from bad to worse? Because God's calling us to obedience. How can we find obedience? What is God wanting us to do? And it's simple like Moses. Moses, go back. Did, did, did the plans change in Moses' life? Did God say, okay, let's, let's rework this a little bit. Okay, now, um, you're not going to go now. I'm going to get somebody. No, no, no. What did God say? Your plans are still the same. Right. So, check this out. This is like a, a, a little extra point, okay? You can try to change God's plans all you want. You're not going to leave the table until you pass the test. And you're going to keep getting that test until you pass it. And when you pass it, you're going to grow, and you'll get wisdom, and then he'll give you another test. And you will stay there until you pass it. And you will continue to take that same test until you pass it. And when you pass it, you're going to grow, and your wisdom, and you'll be stronger, and, you'll, and you might go a little bit further, but then you'll get another test. You know how I know this? Because this is true in my life. No matter how long I've studied the Bible, no matter how many Bible classes I took and theology classes I took, I still have to sit down and take tests from the Lord. And he says to me, okay, let me, let me, let's figure this out. Who are you and what is your job and what is your role and what do I want you to do? Can I tell you, I was okay with quitting the ministry six months ago until God sat me down and said, let's take this test. It's the same test you took when you were 15 years old. Who are you? Why are you here? And what's most important? Okay, I'm just uh, I'm just this redheaded step kid from uh, Jackson, Florida. Uh, I'm an idiot. And um, okay, you want me to preach? Guess what, Jason? It's the same thing. I don't care if you're 15 or 45. It's the same thing. It doesn't change. Yeah, but there's some people there that don't think I should be a pastor. Guess who are they? Right. Right. Yeah, but they're saying some bad things. Do I care what they say about me? No. Ooh, you're scared they might call you some names, Jason? <laughs> Do you know what they called my son? Right. Yeah. right. Oh. Mm. Wow. He also was called a thief. Check this out. He also hung out with prostitutes. They called him a womanizer. Jesus. He also, he also began to perform miracles. They called him Satan. And you're afraid of what? <laughs> you should be afraid of who I am. You should be afraid of not being obedient to me. And I'm telling you, I take the test too. You take the test. Right. We take the test together. And we say, okay, what are we going to do? And then I said, okay, God, but I don't have a job. He says, wait a minute. Hold up. Just wait. Just wait till this week. I'm going to send 200 people to your house. You're going to be employed. <laughs> I only missed one week of preaching the word because I got fired that week. <laughs> and I was on a corner holding the sign that says, we'll preach for food. Because <laughs> I can't do it. Cause, and on the back it says, because I can't drive a truck. <laughs> It doesn't matter what people say about you or think about you or what their opinion is of you. All you should care about is what is God's opinion. And God says, Moses, go back in there and do your job. And he says the same thing to us. Go back and do your job. But God, if, if I go back in my, my job, they're going to laugh at me. He'll say, so what? They're going to they're gonna rely on you one day. Right. They're going to need to know that you're the one that, pray, that prays to me. Right. Let them know where your faith is. Don't be afraid of me. Amen. Take a stand. Amen. Well, they might laugh. Let them laugh. Who cares? Right. Would you rather them laugh at you now? Or later? Man, I'm reading this. I'm going, God, why do you, why do you bring this stuff into my life? I, I, I'm telling you, church, listen to me. I'm a guy who loves peace. 
some days you have to lay that that piece down and you have to pick up a sword and you have to say, God, right. I will fight for you. Amen. 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 And church, if you don't get this message now, listen to me. If you don't get it now, you need to realize it's not going to get any easier. Right. Amen. I mean, I know we like going to church and all this cute little fun stuff and we get a little, you know, I'm telling you right now, it's going to come a time where God's going to look at us and go, go back into Pharaoh's office, take a stand for me, and whatever happens, happens. Right. Amen. Amen. No more black and white TV, high def TV, surround sound. It's going to be a knockdown, drag out battle. Ooh. And we have to be ready. We have to be renewed right. in our spirit and in our heart and our determination because we have to understand there's going to be Pharaohs in this world that sit on these thrones and we have to go take them off of it. Amen. And it's not us doing it, but it's God working through right. us. Amen. And James also says that we take down these strongholds, right? There's yes. strongholds. Yeah. Your, your, your children are fighting. Right. Your kids are fighting. Your grandchildren are fighting. Yes. And we don't take rip these things down out of just sheer force. We take them through prayer mm -hmm. and fasting and his wisdom. Amen. That's why I love our church. Renewal. You know what renewal means? It means you get a do-over. Right? Don't you like do-overs? Yes. yes. Don't you like second chances, third chances, fourth chances? We're all idiots, right? We all make stupid things. Amen. Thank you. Amen. That was my wife saying amen, so she said amen to that comment. So that was her voice. But we all mess up. And I'm sure Moses, I mean, did God rebuke Moses for doubting him? He said, Moses, you're an idiot. He understands our limitations. And if we need God to reaffirm to us what he has, he's going to do that. And I'm going to tell you right now, God's got something big for your life and for my life. Right. Amen. Amen. You're not a mistake. Listen, church, you're not a mistake. You're not a loser. You're somebody special. And God's got a plan and a purpose for you and your family. Amen. The question is, is will you listen to him? <clears throat> That's the question. Let's bow our heads and pray. Would you bow your heads with me? I want to pray over you. I don't know where you're at today. I just This is a sermon that God is you know, working through Moses. And this is the sermon that came out. And maybe today, this, you're like, God, 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 you want me to depend upon you. Moses kept saying that he couldn't speak. Can I ask you, what's your excuse? What is your excuse? We all have excuses. What is your excuse? What are you afraid of? Don't be afraid to make a stand for the Lord. Don't be afraid to change your life and, and to let God be the king that sits on your throne in your world. Don't say this message is for somebody else. This is your message. This is for you. If Moses wouldn't have been obedient, he would have used somebody else. Don't let somebody else take your place. Step up and do what you're supposed to do. Don't be afraid of the kings of this world. You know that the king of the universe is your Lord and Savior. Father, speak to us. Speak to us. Show us areas of our lives where we have to be, become more dependent upon you. Don't let us walk out these doors the same way. Don't let us walk out these doors and think, oh, that was a great message. Or that was a, no, no. Pull it into our hearts. Father, we love you. We trust you. Speak to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me as we worship together? The altar's open. If there's something that you